There are a lot of sins that a person can commit, right? But do you know that there are no single scholar who says that if you commit, if you steal, there's no scholar who says if you steal, you're no longer a Muslim. There's no scholar who says that if you commit fornication or adultery, you're no longer a Muslim. There's no scholar who says that if you drink alcohol, you're no longer a Muslim. Even the taking of life. And yet there are scholars who say, based on a hadith, that if you don't pray, you could be considered no longer a Muslim. You know who's Allah the one that doesn't pray? You know what, let me cut straight to the chase. Let me ask you something. Do you think murder is a bad thing? It's not a true question. Murder, is it a bad thing? Yeah. What about being a pedophile? You think that's awful? I think that's the most disgusting thing in the world. All major sins. All major sins. What about drinking alcohol? Filthy, yeah? What about drugs? Filthy, yeah? Wallahi, my brothers and my sisters, please listen attentively. You could be the biggest murderer in the world. You could be the filthiest rapist in the world. You could be someone who the bottle of alcohol never leaves his hand. You could commit the filthiest of sins. You could do the most extreme and the most bizarre of things. And by no means am I promoting you to do any of them. But you could be a, the absolute filthiest of things. You could do all of this. All of these sins. All of these sins put together are easier. They are lighter in the eyes of Allah than for any one of you to miss one salat. Yet yeah, we take our prayer very lightly. We can point fingers at someone who's clubbing and drinking and doing these things. And yet we take our own prayers lightly. Although in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is a greater sin? A person, you know, some scholars say that a person who purposely leaves their prayers, like out of, you know, just to disobey, that this can actually be considered something that makes you no longer a Muslim. There's a hadith that the Prophet ﷺ says that the difference between the Muslim and the disbeliever is in the, in the Salah. Because our understanding has been lost. Your understanding has been lost. This is the haqq of Allah. Brothers are telling me, yeah, look, I'm a great guy. I just don't pray, brother. What are you talking about? Do you know what it means to not pray? Do you know what that means? To not pray. And I ask you why, sincerely, please tell me, why is it that you don't pray? Please, just tell me something. Did Allah ever, did Allah ever once let you down? Has Allah ever failed you? See, I, I want to clarify something. It's not only a sin to miss prayer, but it is a sin to pray outside of the time of prayer. And it's a major sin. So when Allah says Fajr is to be prayed in a certain time interval, which we know, right? It must be prayed in that time interval. When Allah says that Dhuhr is supposed to be from Dhuhr until Asr, it must be prayed in that time interval. Asr, he gives us the time between Asr and Maghrib. Maghrib, he gives us from Maghrib till Isha. And Isha, from Isha until some say midnight, some say Fajr. The point here is we have an interval of time. Now a lot of people come and say, I can't pray it on time because of X, Y, Z reason. Some of those reasons are, I'm busy at work or I'm busy at school, or I'm in a meeting, or I'm at the mall, or I'm watching a game, or I'm watching a movie, or I'm at a party, whatever it is. My brother and my sister, what is it that's distracting you from Allah? Where was this distraction? Where was it back then? And you came, you were little, you were helpless, you were naked. 
Allah allowed a blanket to cover you. He gave you a mother that breastfed you. Breast milk. With all their technology and all their money and all their science and all their know-how, they still, they still, all together, they still cannot produce a formula that is even half as good as the milk that Allah put in the breast of your mother. You had hands but you couldn't grab. You had legs but you couldn't walk. And He was there for you every day. He was there for you every night. So the first thing we need to focus on in this path back to God is our prayers. So many times people say, you know, I want to get closer to God, but I don't know how. What do I do? Where do I start? This is where you start. You start in solidifying and rectifying your prayers. We need to feed our hearts. We need to feed our souls with the remembrance of God. First and foremost, our prayers. If you can leave your exam or your class or your meeting or your comfortable bed to use the bathroom, you can leave to pray. Because if you make something a priority, you'll make a way for it. Our problem is it just isn't a priority. Let's be real. It just isn't. It just isn't. If you make it a priority, you'll do it. Feeding the heart with the remembrance of Allah. Remember that the one who does not remember Allah, the Prophet ﷺ said that the difference between the one who remembers Allah and the one who does not is like the difference between the living and the dead.